and for veterans in Hamilton. So uh, we're moving this uh, to the head of the agenda to accommodate Ted so that he can get back and do his wonderful job. <laughs> Is it wonderful? So, <laughs> I guess the big item is this parking for veterans. It's, uh, I think we should probably ask Ted to review that. Okay. What Could you review uh, what the parking for veterans uh, is all about, Ted? Certainly. Um, back in 2009, the municipality of Midland had put uh, a proposal together that was circulated to various most communities in Ontario, they were implementing a, uh, a, a program of allowing free parking for anyone that uh, obtained the veteran's license plate through the Ministry of Transportation. Um, it was a, the Ministry of Transportation, that I guess, was at one time lobbied by the Royal Canadian Legion to, uh, to recognize our veterans through a uh, license plate with the poppy symbol on the, on the plates. So subsequent to that, uh, Midland came up with this proposal and they circulated it to every municipality in Ontario and the City of Hamilton, of course, received that as well. And uh, during uh, a, a period of starting in uh, early 2009, we, we investigated the possibility of implementing such a program in Hamilton. Um, there was three, sorry, Councillor. There was no, three. I'd rather do it because they need to hear okay. There was uh, three reports that ended up going to uh, either committee or council on this matter. It was a very contentious issue, and it was very difficult to come up with a decision. <coughs> so the final, the final outcome was a program where uh, a veteran in Hamilton could obtain a permit uh, in, uh, at, the same, at the same time as a, uh, the veteran's license plate. There was concern that uh, anyone with a license plate, a veteran's license plate, could come into Hamilton and um, park for free if the, pro if the program was approved. So to, uh, to address that concern, we come up with a parking permit program that ran uh, in parallel with the veteran's license plate. So an, an individual could get a permit that would exempt them from paying for parking in municipal parking lots and for uh, parking at uh, odd street parking meter. The, uh, the program, uh, there was an eligibility list uh, that requires that the individual uh, must be a resident of Hamilton, uh, the ve their vehicle must be registered in Hamilton, and of course must have the veteran's license plate, and uh, the permit was to be, is to be renewed yearly and uh, the, the point that I think why we're here today is that you, you must be 60 years of age in order to be eligible for the permit. <coughs> that was the, uh, the approved city council policy that was uh, approved in uh, May of 2009. Uh, the staff's original proposal was that you had to serve either in the Second World War or in Korea. That was the recommendation we put forward. At Committee of the Whole, Councillors uh, Morelli and Powers uh, made a motion. One was uh, the motion was made and seconded by those two councillors that the eligibility be for anyone that was 60 years of age or older. Yes, sir. Just on that point, Mr. Chairman, and, and I'm glad that we have an opportunity to have a brief synopsis on why we're where, where we are today. And I think it's important to recognize that. It was a multi-stakeholder um, approach and a very divisive debate at council, not to mention um, a staff's um, a position and how we were able to, to, to Councilor Morelli and I from this particular committee and Councilor Powers and uh, Morelli from council's uh, perspective in trying to uh, come to a, some sort of compromise. And what we have before us is the compromise. Um, and going down the road of opening that up again, will be a can of worms I think uh, nobody would want to revisit uh, because I think ultimately we did move the yardsticks as as um, it's been mentioned, Ted mentioned the fact that the criteria was only uh, World War I, II and, uh, and Korea. Uh, Korea. Um, and now it has opened up to anyone that has to. So I think it's one of those issues that um, it is, a, it is a, a parent victory to some degree. 
Uh, we have we didn't we didn't get the entire. Well, we didn't we shot for the stars and we hit the moon, uh, but I think uh, if we try to push the envelope, we might actually jeopardize um, what we have accomplished today. So that's something that we need to keep in mind. Something we we've, we've worked on for 14, 15 years now. Um, and that's where I, I basically, on behalf of Count, uh, what Councillor Morelli uh, led on this particular file, not to mention all the involvement of this committee in the past, as well as Council, I think it's fair to say that what we have is the best case scenario uh, within, within the challenges that we're faced with. <coughs> yes, Councillor. Uh, Thank you, and I know this is my first visit, and I apologize for jumping in so soon. This was all done prior to me coming into Council. And I should have probably given you some preamble to my family. Um, my brother-in-law is actually currently stationed at CFB, CFRB um, Trenton, has uh, actually done his 30 years, but he's continuing on. He's a corporate uh, <coughs> master corporal. So the reason that this came forward was I had a couple of residents in my ward who were questioning the fact that they can go to Afghanistan, as Councillor Pasuda and my brother-in-law have done, in East Timor and yet they can't be created and be treated the same way that all veterans are treated. They're a veteran. It doesn't matter what age you are, you're a veteran. You chose to pick up that firearm and, and protect this country. You should be able to be treated the same way as anyone else, no matter what generation you came from. <coughs> so that's where my argument comes a little bit from. I really believe that I, I, I appreciate that this has gone through the gamut. I appreciate the fact that this has um, been dealt with. But I'm looking around the table as this was all getting explained and we were all just shaking our heads, understanding we've got a 40-year-old man up in Mount Hope who can't park for free, but he's been over to her twice. And yet we have somebody else who, another gentleman in Bimbrook, and he just worked in a warehouse for the armed forces and he gets to park for free and he's 60. So there's where the discrepancy is and I think it's discriminatory in some say. So I really believe you're a veteran, you're a veteran, you're a veteran. So I don't know what the wish of this committee is, but if you choose, if you want to take a look at this again, I'd be more than happy to help out in any way, in shape, or form. So that's where I'm coming from, and I'll leave it to your good uh, judgment. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, three, Mr. Chairman, to Ted. Ted, when we originally looked back at this, was, what was the numbers potential for uh, people to be eligible for a veteran's plate? Do you we, we had uh, estimated, it was a very difficult, uh, exercise for the individual who worked on this and uh, I believe the number was it was in the neighborhood at the time of around 9700 veterans that lived in the Hamilton area in total so if I may so mr. chairman so 9700 and no idea I mean as far as addresses and that where they would be <coughs> use uh, transit and parking and that no, the, the numbers, that 9,700 was obtained uh, through uh, Veterans Affairs in the Department of National Defense. <coughs> and that was active or retired Armed Forces personnel in the Hamilton area. I'd just like to point out at this time that an active member of the Canadian Armed Forces is not allowed to apply for a veteran's plate. Sorry. So your numbers would come down considerably. Yes, sir. I know that in, when I'm driving around, I have these plates on mine, and I don't see every other car driving with these things. I'd just like to other, point out one other thing, too. Right now, the, the city of Hamilton is in the process of revitalizing the core. They're spending an enormous amount of money on fixing up what's going to be known as Veterans Place. It seems very sad to me that you can spend tens of thousands of dollars to turn around and pay for the dead but those who came afterwards are not entitled to anything. All they are is voters and expenses, and I think it's very sad. <coughs> Ted, uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Yeah. On that point, I think uh, there was clear consensus from this committee, including Council Riley and I, that that's what our intent was to pursue. Uh, what I'm trying to um, vocalize is that that wasn't the uh, consensus of Council nor was it the recommendation of staff. And at the end of the day, we can, we can always go back and rehash the reports. Well, but all, all I'm saying is that if you're going to open this up, um, because we've gone through it over almost a decade period, if you're going to open this up again, there's a probability that when, when everything is, and I, I'm more than willing to, to champion it again, uh, but we were unsuccessful the first time. And we can always try again for, for, for the sport of it, 
but I just don't want to jeopardize anything that we have accomplished. And that's, that's where the reality of the issue is. So and sometimes in politics, as in life, um, you have to try to find a compromise. This was the compromise that Councilor Morelli and I uh, chose to accept only because the alternative was that only World War II uh, and Korea would be recognized. In this way, it opens also, up to all the other Okay. Also? Ten years ago, I went to the War Plain Heritage Museum November Day <coughs> ceremonies with my father. There was probably 300 people in the room. And the only cameras in sight were the ones that we kept in our coat pockets. Today, there's over 3,000 people going to this. I believe that people are starting to realize that we need to honor our veterans, whether depending on if they're 60, they're 80, or they're 40. So I really believe in my heart that this would be a no-brainer to bring it to council. When you look at not 9,700 people, it'd be less than that because it's retirees, it's not active personnel. And I really believe that we could probably give this a shot, even if we went around and got a straw vote to see first whether or not we could even have the appetite to go through with this. I think it's worth a shot. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, the three, uh, so what was the cost of this potentially on an annual basis? Well, it was very difficult. It, it was very there difficult. There was a number that they came up with. But the numbers, the numbers we come up with, just, just so you know, and I'll compare it to today's. Uh, to date this year, we've issued uh, veterans permits uh, in the number of 286. And last year, it was just over 300, 326. So when we did our calculations, and this is back in 2009, and it was, you know, different scenarios of, of when um, individuals, how long individuals will be parking. But based on the, those numbers of two to 300, it, was, it could range anywhere from about $16,000 a year up to uh, $80,000 a year. Okay. And when we looked at the, the potential of abuse, for instance, the, the, the actual permits attached to the vehicle, not the person, what was that aspect? I recall that that being a very contentious issue as well. So in essence, it, uh, if you're driving a car, if I'm driving a car that belongs to a veteran, that was also a contentious component to all of this. It was one of the factors, certainly, that we put on the table, is that we, we cannot uh, determine who's actually driving the vehicle. Okay. So I'm more than willing to reaffirm the original position of this committee uh, for, the, for the permits to be, to be pursued uh, for any, anyone that served. I guess that would include myself, having served in Cornwallis. Uh, but having said that, what's the, what's the criteria then? Is it anyone that served in active war, or uh, can we open up the criteria again? <clears throat> the the eligible well we base it on the license plate but the license plate is uh, issued by the ministry based on um, any person <coughs> let me just make sure here any person who has served three or more years in either the regular or reserve contingents of the Canadian Armed Forces regardless of combat experience or has served in NATO as a member of the United Nations peacekeeping force, either as a member of the oh, forces or as a member of the RCMP or a member of any other Canadian police force. So that's the definition? That's the definition, yes. For a veteran's license plate, right. and of course we, we, part of our criteria is you need the veteran's <coughs> license plate. So how do we logistically know. then, through you Mr. Chairman, how do we logistically, I know we talked about this then, but now that we're rehashing it, how do we deduce it down to those that um, actually are serving them? We have, we have the veteran bring in their papers. They're just checking. Some identification that proves that they actually have served. Right. So the overall cost would be $80,000 to $100,000 a year? Excuse me, if I might just interject here. The paperwork that he's talking about that you have to bring in is uh, the paperwork that you have to submit to the Royal Canadian Legion to have permission to get this. They investigate your uh, criteria Okay, and they then uh, allow you to have the permit. Mm -hmm. It then goes to there. No, so I understand. I'm just wondering, okay, because I think I'm just trying to re reaffirm what this committee did originally, but for some reason, by the time we left here and got to council, we didn't have the support for it. So, for the record, when, at, at the time when, when you're going through this process, why would you recommend against it at that time? Well, we, the main criteria, the main reason was, was the financial aspect. A uh, secondary concern uh, relates to the the abuse that could occur from these permits. Um, for instance, with the disabled uh, permit uh, program that we have in the city that exempts people from parking, 
we have uh, serious, serious concerns from the business community about the disabled community that are, are parking all day long at parking meters. So the proliferation between disabled permits, veterans permits, whatever permits are out there, taking away the available parking for the uh, individuals that may be shopping in the retail okay. area. So from my perspective, I'm, I'm prepared, as I did back in 2005 or whenever it was, to reaffirm our position that it should be open to all veterans. And I'm sure Councillor Pesuda will second that. And uh, we'll allow the chips to fall where they fall then. So I'll, I'll move that accordingly. Second by Councillor Pesuda. And uh, Ted, I guess you'll, you'll, you'll go back to do the report, uh, bring it to Council with all the financials as well as we did last time, and then we'll talk about it at Council again. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I don't know the proper protocol. Should a recommendation come from the it would go to planning? It would go from here to planning to Council. Right. Right. To GIC, yes. yes. The chair will have to submit a report to ECS, and then that will go to. Wishing us to reinvest it, yes. yes. And I'll talk, and then what I'll do is that uh, at Emergency Community Services, which I sit on, I'll be able to expand upon it further for more detailed report, and then refer it to GIC and then ultimately to Council. And listen, uh, just uh, as, a, as, a, as a point of clarity, Councilor Morelli and I initiated this uh, about 10 years ago. It failed on the Council floor. The, what we have today is a compromise that was, that was found. If we can change what, what occurred, I'm all with it. I, uh, well, I have a question a, for, for Ted. Uh, <clears throat> has you investigated other cities? Uh, they have the uh, Veterans Plate uh, program. I've heard from veterans from other cities get free parking wherever they go, but not in Hamilton. We, we have not updated the information from 2009. In 2009, the only participatory municipalities were Burlington, Niagara Falls, and St. Catharines. There was no other exemption for veterans. Well, I think it's about time, on my behalf, I think it's about time that the City of Hamilton looked at giving free parking for veterans with plates. That's right. Anywhere in the city. I'd just like to make as a, a final note here, uh, we seem to take great pride in the fact that we are the only city in, in Canada that has a veterans committee. Okay? Let's put our money where our mouth is. Okay? I mean, if we're going to, you know, are we that worried about uh, this money? Uh, there are all kinds of, uh, of arguments that could be made against us <coughs> when you look at some of the raises that some staff has had in the past. But uh, I think it's justified. Put your money where your mouth is. Yes, Councillor. Thank you. And, and again, thank you for allowing me to come here. Um, one of the things that I wanted to point out as well, that if there is a license plate with a veteran on it, then it's a no-brainer for the, for the staff. There's no work involved for the staff. Whereas if we have them come in, get their... their criteria and then see if they're 60 years old then we release them a, a, a permit well there's some work involved and there's there's staff time involved now there's no staff time involved if they have the plate that's it it's a done deal so to me i think that needs to be included in the staff report that there will be no staff time on this that it's just whoever has the plate right. I, I, just on that point Ted, could you elaborate on that point because i think that would that well that would be a concern that we would bring forward in that do you want to include veterans from outside the Hamilton area? And then, veterans then, then you're opening up to. How are you going to be able to tell? Them? The plates are the okay. same. No, 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 no. I, no, no but that's part of the. Don't shoot the messenger here. No, no, no. You're right. The, 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 the situation is, is I don't know how many veterans we have in, in Canada. You know, do, do you want to exempt all of them? Uh, that's just uh, you know. I think that's the other issue was you have to consider. the other issue was that people do are commuting um, to Hamilton from other cities that work here, and but that that was and that that's all being part and parcel of the report, and we'll we'll look into it because that is our original position. The position of this committee is exactly pursuing what we're pursuing right now. So, so we're just reaffirming our original position. But uh, as as the councilor says, it would it is a no brainer if you open up to anybody. You just park. We don't have to issue any permits. Everybody knows the rules. But there are financial implications, and there are also implications to the, the business improvement areas. They, they were consulted when we went through this the first go around, to, you know, because they had concerns about, you know, you go down to the armories, you have an event down there, and then every parking meter on James Street theoretically could be taken up by a veteran. Well, then somebody that's down there to try and buy a pair of shoes can't find a parking spot. I'm only relaying the, the concerns we have received from the BIAs. Yeah, and that's fine, and, and that's why we're going to have to just, what we have to do is go through that entire process again, and I'm more than willing to do that. 
uh, just to clear for the clarity purposes of this whole mission. And if I could, my la my last comment is, it took three reports to get a, oh, to get a conclusion and to this. And about so four this years. Yes, and this <laughs> this won't be resolved uh, for the first of May. <laughs> I said I was. I just I just have one one last question. We keep on saying that if we open up a can of worms, we could lose everything. Are you telling me then that they could decide to scrap the entire process whatsoever? No, I, I don't believe that. But I think what happens sometimes is when certain things are done based on an understanding and a compromise, mm -hmm. it sometimes creates um, a perception um, that, that the, the, deal, the deal wasn't done on, on good solid, solid ground. So this was a compromised position, right? So Council Powers, Morelli, Powers took care of the suburban um, uh, component of this, and Councilor Morelli, um, in his leadership, took care of the, the, the inner city or the city of Hampton proper, and that was the compromise he came up with at that time. Um, so that was a full debate that happened last term, so we no, no need for reconsideration. It would be simply a straightforward motion, uh, but we'd ha we'd have to go through the process from beginning again. And just, uh, just giving you some sort of insight, having experienced it, on the surface it seems a lot simpler than it actually is. And, and once everything is, comes out, you'll understand why. But I have no problem going through it again. If Quebec can re bring it up every two months in a while, so can we. <laughs> well, I have no problem with it. I just, because that was our official position of this committee. So, yeah. Yeah. Dave, are you wanting to go back to council? Absolutely. <laughs> no? But, yeah, I agree. Um, okay, so because we don't have quorum, we can't actually officially. Um, okay, so what we can do though is, I, uh, Councillor Pursuit and I can do it. Uh, why don't we do it that way? But I'll, I'll, can you just draft the motion and Councillor Pursuit and I will move it at uh, GIC or Emergency Community Services, whatever comes first. Oh, you're not on that. GIC then, GIC. So Councillor Pursuit and I will move it at GIC. Well, I know that our missing member uh, would vote for it too because uh, he got a $30 parking ticket with the <laughs> veterans' club. He has to declare Congress. And, 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 and he never got the money back. So, uh, you know, he uh, was a little upset. <laughs> he never got the money back. What do you mean? Well, the, because he has veterans' place, they tried to. There's our official response, sir. I don't write parking tickets. <clears throat> I'm the good guy. Give me a permit. <laughs> yeah. I've seen. It. Oh, because yeah, he paid it. Response. Oh. Oh, you should have paid it. He should. See, he should just. Just doesn't pay to be a good citizen in the city. Yeah, but right when he got it, he should have said, "What's this? It's a wrong ticket, right?" Yeah, so. Actually, he went over there to talk to them about it, and they went, "No, pay it." And he was there, he wasn't going to come I'm back not, a second time, so he did. I, I'm not 100% sure he actually spoke to an adjudicator. Yeah. I think he just spoke to one of the customer service reps and didn't. It's unusual. It's no, not no, the same so. to an adjudicator. Why don't we, um, is there any way, though, Ted? There's got to be a way. To refund the money? Yeah. Apparently not. Once the money's been paid, you'd have to talk to Billy Young or Pam. I, I so legally, know. there's no way around it? <coughs> My understanding is not. But, but you should get it from the horse's mouth. Okay, well, can we get then, because um, this was for Pam, and it reads, particularly on first however, we do not provide refunds or fines for future reference should Mr. Tompkins receive it. No, okay. So it doesn't explain why we can't. So if we can get a formal response on why we can't, and what legally we would have to do to allow it, I, I think in all fairness, it, sends us, it would send a, a fair message that this was unfair. <coughs> You should have called his counselor. <laughs> it may it may be that I know, I know. when Pam says the circumstances surrounding the ticket are unfortunate, it might be that he didn't have his veterans parking pass displayed. Well we need no, to know all those details. He did. Where he parked was um, where it says oh, um, yes. no permit parking out here. Yes, that's that's right. He was in the He got it here? He got Absolutely. it here yeah. in the area that says no permit. He got it no at the January meeting. The veterans <laughs> meeting. Oh, I just like I just like to point out at this time right now, okay, that parking even to be a member of this committee is a pain in the butt. Okay? At one time we used to be able to park across the road and uh, at least that was consistent. You could always find a parking spot across the road. So what happens? 
all of a sudden they want to change the rules because they want to save some money. It was that no, terrible was income again. So they got changed over to giving us day passes that we have here, which can be used in the parking lot in the back. Three quarters of which, okay, is no permit parking. So we have gentlemen who are in their 80s and 90s now have to park at the very far end of the parking lot down over here to walk in here to try to uh, well, attend this now, meeting. Just for the record, would that, would that be allowed to go to, um, would they be allowed to access convention center parking? No, we used to, yeah, we used to, to get um, passes for the convention center, but I'm assuming now with us not being heck by anymore, they've switched it to no. now we no, no, parking's still us. No, no, yeah. that's me. Yeah. There's well, there's no reason why you can't get parking. Okay, so we'll, we'll, get back. <coughs> we'll get you back to the, the okay. convention center. Yeah, because no Hackfly never took over our parking. Yeah, no, we were we were just, when I ordered their passes the last time, we were told we couldn't have the Hackfly ones anymore. We had to have the... Oh, yeah, but they're not okay. Hackfly. Did you get that from the first department? Did they tell you that? Um, the, the Hamilton... Well, they normally do have coffee. The, well, that's the general, she said they have it. Our, no, see, we, we we do not have passes for City Hall anymore. They've been gone since amalgamation. Well, All see, visitors, we park in the underground. And that's why I was so surprised when I got those ones. Yeah, and, I'll, I'll have to and check that out for you. Roll did the same thing, so you're not alone. Yeah. You're not. But I don't get, I think there's a miscommunication there. Okay. Because yeah. Rebecca, good. I'll, okay. I'll talk to Liz and we'll sort it out for you. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Cause there's no might. reason why you can't go underground. That's our parking. It's not hatch lights. No, it's not. Yeah. Oh. So. No, we have more room in there now because heck, by because Carmen's don't run as many events. Well, I, uh, yeah. hmm. I can't understand. Money. They're saving us money, which is good so far. Sorry. I can't understand why is Dave brought up the point that we of this committee, there's seven of us, with a couple of advisors, hopefully down the road, cannot get a per permanent parking pass to come to City Hall once a month for 12 months of the year. To park for this meeting, uh, you know, we because set up that way. but we can, we do send you with the agenda, right? Mm -hmm. Does it come in your agenda packet? I I send parking passes to those who need it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he parked in the wrong place in City Hall and got a thirty dollar parking. That was an error. Uh, but had had the appeal process gone through, like had he contacted one of us. It would never happen. But we're going to look at it and find out why it can't happen. He should just never have paid. He just said, listen, and she, he could just walk right up to the second level of the council's area and say, what's up with this? And we're he's, done. Uh, he's not the type. Apparently. <laughs> he's, 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 he's in his 80s. He's, you know, he's like, 90s. Or 90s. He's, he's, he's in his 90s. He's in his 90s. We'll, we'll all pitch in for him, too, and we'll, we'll give him the $30. Uh, uh, I'm willing to pitch in. <laughs> uh, I don't think he'll take it now, but nonetheless, uh, uh, you know, and Billy's in 95, and I'm soon to be 80, you know, and, and firm. One of the few times we're all getting like older, so I'm older than you. Anyway. <laughs> yes, sir. Could we also request that we have coffee and possibly tea for the... Oh, my God. 